What is going on everybody? Drake Bell here with another video. As you can see, it's daylight. And as you see by the title of this video, we are taking the Gen 1 to the track finally after a few weeks, maybe a month of owning the car. So I'm really excited to see what the car does in stock form. I'm also going to buy some badass wheels. I'm talking about like, these are my dream wheels. You've heard me mention it plenty of times before. I'm not gonna say, I'm just gonna show you guys. Even my buddies don't know. So I'm gonna surprise them with them. They are used but it doesn't matter because you save money on used wheels for shit that still works the same as brand new. They also do have a tire. They were on a car that made like 1500 wheel horsepower and S550. Um, so that tire is absolutely massive, way too big for the 5.0. Even the tires that I have on my 5.0 are currently too big. It's technically a 305 45. It's a Hoosier. It's too big for basically stock power levels. So I am a little bit slower being on the tire aside from now i don't spin i hook so let's go to the bank withdraw some cash and then let's go pick up these wheels man i'm excited the goal with the 5.0 in stock form i want to touch sevens in the eighth i don't know if it'll happen i'm pretty sure it's gonna be uh, in the eight seconds realm you keep in mind it's stock it's also stick shift so i everything comes down to like the launch if i get that launch dial psh, solid if i get a 799 i'll be happy I also have to call my homie who has a Snell approved helmet. I don't have a Snell approved helmet. I have on my motorcycle helmets, which I don't understand why those aren't allowed on the track. Keep in mind, you could be on a motorcycle and crash and it's supposed to help save your life, but it's not good enough to be in a car? What? So hopefully the homie will let me borrow his helmet. I'm gonna see if he can bring it over to my shop. So yeah, let's go get this cash. Oh, also follow me on Instagram at Drake Belt. Like I say in every single video, if you want to see a lot of this Gen 1 build, including draggy times, pulls, and everything else, a bunch of testing with the car, I do a lot on my Instagram. So go follow me on Instagram, at DrakeBow. I promise you, you're not gonna regret it. Also, cop your fire ass merch, DrakeBowPerformance.com. The link is in the description. Cop your shirts, sweaters, decals, license plate frames. Banners are finally gonna be back in stock. I go to pick them up on Monday. So look forward to banners being back in stock. For those that have placed an order, and it's I'm telling you, it's been months ago since you guys had placed your orders on my website for decals and banners and license plate frames, I had a lot of trouble with my um, account, basically, on my website, I couldn't log in. And so it was literally like two months, three months of going back and forth with Shopify to help get me back logged in. So it's probably been about a week since I was able to log back in so I could get the orders out. I've just been super, super swamped, had hardly any free time lately. So I'm really hoping on this coming Monday, when I pull the Gen 1's engine, I can also ship out the orders. So stay tuned for that. I am so sorry for the wait. It won't happen again, I promise. But for the shirts and sweaters, I do have a third party vendor that helps me get those out. So if you order shirts and sweaters, they go out like real quick, you get them in about a week. I've just been lagging it myself for the banners and stickers and the license plate frames. That's 100% my fault. I think if I hadn't taken off, I think it was like a month of Shopify logging in, then I would have still been able to log in, but like it basically expired and I couldn't get it back. So I had to kind of make a new one. So it is what it is. Okay, enough jibber jabber shit, man. Let's get to the bank. Actually, real quick, everybody's been asking me, what about the Gen 2? <clears throat> Excuse me. What about the Gen 2? Whatever happened to your Gen 2? Do you have it? Did it get repoed? Whatever the case might be. I still have the Gen 2 and I still, yes, am building it, but keep in mind, it's very expensive. I need to get my tube front, tubed and tub rear, my 25 point cage, my 6.5 cert cage. Uh, I need to get all of that and that shit ain't cheap. I'm talking about like, there's another 150 or $200,000 that has to go into this car to get it done. I need a TH400, the 5.0 block that I actually built myself, I have sold, I'm not doing a 5.0 anymore, I'm doing a 5.2, so it's just a long process. I'm not rich, I'm poor as fuck, I'm like, I'm able to have fun with what I have and everything, but I still have the Gen 2, it's just gonna take a very long time to build. I want the chassis all done this year, I'm also not gonna do a hood, fender, bumper, I'm doing one whole front carbon fiber clip, so, Everything is just very expensive. That's why it's taking me so long to get this car up and going. I got a lot of haters. I got other shops that are like, oh, it's easy to claim this number and claim this and claim that to look cool, but you're not gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Just give me time, bro. I'm not filthy rich like most of these other shop owners. Like it's, it's not like that. So just stay tuned. I will get the Gen 2 up and going very soon. Hopefully I want the chassis done this year, engine and trans in, and then button up everything else later. Just please be patient with me. 
and the package has been secured. I wasn't gonna buy wheels like this very like anytime soon, but the deal that the homie is giving me is like a deal that you can't really pass up. It's definitely a solid ass deal. So I'm going to scoop them. Like the wheels alone go for more than what I'm paying and these have tires on it already so I could sell those tires and make some money back as well as sell my welds that I have on there right now. So I'm very excited. It is what it is, man. Sometimes you just gotta jump the jump. Now let's go get these wheels, man. Mwah. All right, I got the wheels. Uh, can you see it in the corner? Oh, can't show you too much, not yet. I gotta show you in the sunlight when I clean them up. Now we head back to the shop. This drive is like a 35 minute drive. Hopefully we got no traffic. It's only 12 in the afternoon, so we should be good. But shout out from Mr. Antonio. Shout out to Mr. Antonio from Yellow Jacket. He gave me a super, super good deal on these wheels and tires. I'm gonna sell the tires, like I said. Um, I'm still gonna flick it up on the, on the 5.0. Maybe the Scat too, why not? But I still need to order the lug nuts because for these wheels, you need special lug nuts. Otherwise, they'll fall off. This is what Antonio told me. He's like, if you use your lug nuts that you have right now on the 5 -0, these wheels will fall off. Fuck that. I'm not doing that. So as soon as I get to the shop, then I will order up these lug nuts and hopefully get them quick. I might do overnight shipping and order my tires, order night, overnight shipping because I want these bitches on. All right, let's get to the shop. All right. Wait, 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 wait. Your opinion first. They're so beautiful. So I beautiful. Drop it down. Drop it down. Ooh. Damn, son. 15 by 10 Bellix, baby. <laughs> and I also just realized, first off, I can't fit them on the scat because I don't have a 15 inch brake conversion. Number two, my 15 inch brake conversion, which is just a sway bar relocation kit for the Gen 1 has not came in yet. So I can't even test fit them kind of a bummer but first i'm gonna get these washed up cleaned up ceramic coat them and then uh maybe pull off the tires because i'm gonna sell these tires i don't need these tires are way too big 315 60. like i can't even put into perspective how big these fucking tires are cameras don't do it justice but they're too fat i'll be super super slow on these if you guys didn't know if you run too big of a tire for your power level it will slow you down so don't go too big these are too big but I got them as like a package deal, so I gotta sell these tires. Okay, I'm gonna do a quick time lapse of me cleaning up these wheels. And here we are, all nice and clean. Now I just gotta coat them. As you can tell, they're used, so it's not like a perfect polish, but I can always finish that up. I think I'm gonna polish these out first before I coat them because there's stuff like this kind of baked in just a little bit. It looks like it was like some residue from soap or whatever, and then I dry them with brakes, they get hot, so it kind of bakes whatever's in to the wheel. But they are all clean. And yes, you saw me scrubbing the tire. I was trying to get off all these little rocks and stuff. I mean, it doesn't matter to have these rocks on there. I guess it comes off pretty good with my hand, but um, I just wanted them pretty much as clean as possible because we're leaving these around and all that. I don't want these rocks getting all over my shop or in my car how they already did, so it is what it is. Using my hand actually worked really good to get the rest of those rocks off, but they are all clean. Let's go get a little pin shot in the sun. These look so good. They shine like they're brand new still. Thank God. There's no cracks in the face. If you guys didn't know these are not street legal or not really street legal but they don't recommend using these on the streets because they could crack the face because the potholes and everything else like that there's no cracks in the face i'm so excited these are my like all-time dream wheels and i finally got them my first pair of thelix i just peeked underneath the 5.0 and it already has the sway bar relocation kit on it and the little nubs that you have to cut are already cut so that means i get to test fit these on the car can't really drive on it i think these tires are too big and it won't fit in the fender well but that's actually pretty dope so i'm gonna throw them on real quick 
it also kind of sucks because I already ordered the 15 inch relocation kit and it's shipped, but I think I could just sell it to one of my customers and then be good to, you know, make that money back. It's only like 40 bucks for the kit, it's super cheap. But now let's throw these doinks on the Gen 1, I'm excited. Brother, this shit got that Hellcat Luis fitment. It's just that tire is so fucking big. Way too big. I'm not running this tire, but holy shit. I can't even get my finger in there. That's so funny. Hellcat Luis fitment on God. These wheels do look tough though. The wheel itself is basically flush with the quarter panel. So with my tire that I'm gonna run, it's gonna fit perfect just the way these fit too with the right offset. But damn, son. Jesus. Bro, this is hilarious. Since it's not like a flat level surface, it's literally chilling on the tire right now. <laughs> As you can see, it's had a drag back on before and that's what happens when you get the wrong offset. It'll burn up the paint. So I am gonna repaint like that lips, fenders, and front bumper and get a new hood for the car. But damn, uh, some big ass meats. Kinda wanna move it and get some picks with it. That shit is so sick. These buckles are gonna go hard once I have the right size tire on them. Okay, so I moved it and just look at it digging into the tire. It's not like really digging in yet, but I literally moved it like five feet and you can see the little rubber that it's pushing up. Dude, <laughs> this shit is hilarious to me. Oh my God. It looks hard as fuck though. I'm not gonna lie. All right, I moved it back in the shade. Number one, it's hot as fuck. Number two, these don't fit. This side is a little higher than the driver's side. This is just how Gen 1s are. The S1 and S7s, they always like this. It's more space on the right side than there's on the left but look at this oh hell no it didn't cut an actual groove in it's just rubbing on it real real hard and i'm just not gonna drive it like that fuck that like you can see the rubber that is laying down screw that i just want to throw them on and see how it looks Get a little instagram post for my instagram story type shit and just like that the lagunas and hoosiers are back on ready for tonight i'm gonna bring the tools with me so i could gut my interior I'm gonna pull the back seats here right now, but I'm gonna take my homie with me. While we're there, we're gonna pull out the seat. And I'm also gonna be my air compressor so I can air down to like 15 or 16 PSI. I wanna hook, I wanna make a good pass, gutted but stock power. The goal is to get some baseline numbers, see where we're at, and see where we're gonna be when the car is done. But for now, we're gonna pause the video and then when I'm ready to continue it, I'll hop back on. BRB. Now we're gonna use the watt box. Keep in mind, like I said, this is not tuned. It just has a watt box and two steps. So I'm gonna dial it down. It's at 5,500 RPM. So I'm gonna put it at probably like 3,500 RPM and see how it is. And then we'll test and tune. Probably looking for three passes tonight. Honestly, bro, fuck this watt box. It's been like this for multiple cars that I personally have had them on. You just cannot get it to connect to your laptop. I've been trying for literally an hour and I just can't get it to connect. I tried uninstalling the, the software reinstalling look read wallbox can't communicate with the computer and then it says to select i did the troubleshooting select your com com5 read watch cannot communicate with your computer i can't do anything so the watt still works from when the guy had originally installed it so like i'll show you that so you hear how it cuts out that still works and the two-step also works But that's 5,500 RPM. That's way too much RPM. I can't launch at 5,500 RPM. So I'm gonna have to hold this shit with my foot and e-brake. That's fucking whack. I'm like low key upset. I'm at least gonna go try and test that 5,500 RPM and just see what it does. Maybe I can slip the clutch a little bit, but with the watt box, if you slip the clutch a little bit, it'll just misfire. So we're gonna see, I'm like pretty upset, but I hit up the original owner like, yo, how did you get this thing to connect? Because I gotta change it, man. It's not working for me. Just like I thought, didn't work. Granted, I'm not aired down. I didn't do a burnout. I'm not on prep. So, of course, it's gonna spin, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna spin on the like strip as well. I I don't know, man. All right, I am now gutted, and we are on our way to the track. As you can see, we brought the tools upon the passenger seat. It's loud as fuck in here. I can't hear a thing. We have about an hour drive to the track. Let's go. I'm letting the homie Nick use my scat, and look who we stumbled upon. He's coming to the track with.
with us. And he left from his house. <laughs> We are now here at the track. You know, take this, go get tagged, and then I have to take a piss so bad. We just got our pit, our, our pit, we got our inspection done. Look at this beamer, this thing's sick on a tire. But we just got our inspection done. Of course, we passed. We have our Stella approved helmet. I don't think I need this because I don't, I'm not going to run fast enough, I don't think. But I brought it anyway just to be safe in case I run a fast enough time to have to wear it. I got my pants and sweater inside the car as well. So we're pretty much ready to go. I'm gonna go take a piss and then we'll go line up and do my first pass. I also have my GoPro, so I have a 360 I'm gonna pull on the car and then I have a forehead mount that I'll stick on the helmet somehow. Got our little spot in the pits. Got the Scatty Pacquiao and the 5.0 out here in the cut. I gotta pee so bad. While power airs me down, I'm gonna go take my leak real quick. I also just seen a cyber truck over in the lane, so I kind of kind of curious where that's gonna run. If you guys remember me, it's almost been two years where I took a Roush blower Gen 3 10 speed 50 um, here at this track and did some passes. It's been nearly two years, so I'm excited to finally be back on the track rather than just a spectator because that's what I've been for the last couple years. You see the cyber truck? <laughs> it looks so weird. And here we are gutted no front seat no back seats pulled out all the truck liner all together all right we're gonna go out and get our first pass this is the first time i'm ever gonna track this car so it's gonna be a rough first pass but i mean if we make it a to b and run anywhere like 8081 i'm gonna be happy the goal today i want to do at least three passes and uh try to touch a seven that would be dope i'm gonna try to get three povs so one i'm gonna have my phone right here on my steering wheel facing me I'm gonna have the helmet with the GoPro on it and I have my 360 on the windshield right there. So we should have three POVs as well as the launch POV from the outside and a POV from the stands itself. So this should be good. You'll see every single angle possible that I could do for you guys. I'm telling you right now, this Gen 1 build's gonna go super crazy. So stay tuned for all the content. This is just gonna be how it is in stock form and we'll progress from there. Look what pulled up to us in the staging lanes. The cyber truck on his off-road tires too. I'm really curious, what does he run? That's just so funny. I've been in the staging lanes now for 45 minutes and people just keep breaking and breaking and blowing up and breaking and breaking on the track. So it's like, I've been stuck here. Every time we're about to go, boom, someone breaks. Also, they said no GoPros on the outside of the car. So I put it on the inside of the windshield. So hopefully that's a good enough angle for you guys. I'm editing this video while I'm at a race right now and I don't understand what happened to the clips in between the first and second pass, but they're not here and I don't know why, but basically I ran an 822 on that first pass and I had a 19860 foot, which was garbage. So this is now us doing the second pass. Let's get this second pass now. I'm actually not gonna put my phone there because I wanna be able to see my RPM. So you're gonna have a little other QB.
That was a much better pass. Ran a 8-0, so we have a seven in us for sure. Seven nine, the 60 foot was a little bit better. Still need to work better on that launch. It hooked yet again, which is very good. I'm very happy. The burnout was a little better, but the thing likes to cock left to right, and I don't, I gotta figure that shit out. For now, I'm gonna go ahead and park it and let it cool down for probably 20 or 30 minutes because that's a hot lap back to back, and I don't really wanna below this engine or anything because I am selling this engine. So we're gonna take it easy. Okay, so again, we're left lane. Hold on, let me see if I can fix the lighting. So if you can see, the 60 foot was a 183, so that's much better. And then an 80 at still 88 miles an hour. So we're making improvements. I think this next one I could get a 79 if I launch a little harder. So now while we let it cool down, let's go get some grub. I was gonna leave the hood pop, but there's some weird ass motherfuckers here and I don't want them fucking with my shit. Yeah, fuck it, let's pop the hood. Bro, cracking a cold one of that root beer and mid bike. Go ahead, take your bite, bro. Might as well. Why'd you use it, bro? Why'd you twenty? You too, bro. All right, all right, bro. I'm waiting for my funnel cake. Here at Irwindale's Speedway, they have the best fucking funnel cakes, and I got apple this time instead of strawberry. Hyped. Look at that motherfucker. Damn. Funnel cake, powdered sugar, cinnamon apple, whipped cream, and chocolate drizzle. Go ahead, lick your finger, bro. Good boy. <laughs> and also got a strawberry banana smoothie. All done eating the funnel cock. Now about to go back to the car and get in the staging lanes. Let's get this third pass and hopefully at least get a seven nine. If we get a seven on this next pass, we're going home, okay? If we get an eight or higher, we're gonna run it back again. I need a seven today. There also is a race tonight. So depending on how that race goes, you might see this video first or the race, I don't know yet. All right, let's get this third pass. Let's pray for a seven, please, please a seven. So the homie also has a gen one. He's been auto and MT82. And he said, drop it to 13 PSI and try 6,500 RPM launch. I'm gonna use my two step at 5,500 and do 13 PSI, let's see what it does. All right, the tires are dropped. We're gonna try a 5,500 RPM launch. I have a very strong feeling it's just gonna blow the tires off. I can't get a good burnout, man. I think this time I'm gonna try to just keep it still in the spot it's at and then drag it out last second to get them dry, but we'll see how I could get. You, we'll see how I could do. and it just fucking went it hooked and booked i swear to god bro that shit got me all excited that's my seven second pass right there i guarantee it god damn i'm so excited bro that pass is gonna be sick i can't wait to see it from the outside i'm not even gonna lie i got nervous since it fucking dead hooked and i fucking shifted up early from one to two and two to three i shifted too early by like 500 rpm but regardless i think that 60 foot is gonna be crazy that's like a one six 60 foot maybe i'm hoping for a one six brother so not only did i run a seven i ran a seven six seven sixty one at 89 miles an hour and my 60 foot is a one five holy shit i can't fucking believe it 766 89 miles an hour in a one five sixty foot bro i'm fucking lit and this is a bone stock gen one like it has an intake and throttle body but no tune so it's like oh three horsepower whatever the watt box bro came in fucking clutch holy shit i might should we do one more pass i'll 
don't see why not. I don't see why not. All right, we cooled down for a little bit. I dropped the PSI to 11 PSI because I looked at the video and I did spin just a little bit. So I think at 11 PSI, it should be good to dead, dead hook. Uh, no tire spin at all and then hopefully get a 7.5 maybe like a 7.59 that would be nice Granted I did shift up early from first to second and second to third So if I get super good smooth shifts and a perfect launch, I think I have a 7.59 in here So for this pass, we're gonna be racing the C8. Look at his exhaust setup He's also on a tire a beadlock ET Street R with some R888 R's up front. So this is gonna be a sick run. He told me the time he ran, it was a little faster than me, but let's see, it might be a good race if I uh, get a perfect, perfect pass on this one. Let's go. All right, after waiting for about 15 minutes here in the staging lanes, we're gonna make our fourth and final pass for the day. Let's hope we get a 7.5. I'm praying for a 7.5. Thank you God, please, if you do. And again, there were supposed to be more clips here. I was recording the vet afterward and everything else. And I don't know what happened. I don't have the clips, but it was a super good race. He did beat me at a great time. That last pass wasn't as good as the, the third pass. I ran a 777, triple sevens for that last pass. Still a good pass. We still hugged for stock car. This thing was crazy. So now we'll continue toward the end of this video. I'm sorry for the missed clips. I don't know what happened. Shout out to every single one of you guys, all the subscribers that came up and said, what's up? Took pictures and videos of me at the track. That was super dope. Even some older folk were like, yo bro, I'm a huge fan of your channel. So it's dope that like an older crowd is watching the channel. I think it's pretty sick. Right now I'm gonna go take a piss before I leave. And then we're pretty much gonna wrap it up. I already aired the tires and put the interior back in and we're gonna head out. We do have a race to go to. So we're gonna go to the location eat some in and out and then get to that content so if you guys enjoyed this video please like subscribe stay tuned for this gen 1 build it is gonna go crazy all right like i said if you enjoyed the video like subscribe and i'll catch you in the next one deuces